In thanksgiving for God's generosity to us, we must learn to share our talents and treasures. As we pray daily, our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we must learn to share our resources so that earth will be like heaven. That's what we pray for. Your kingdom come among us here. Let your will be done here as it is done in heaven. And what do they do in heaven apart from sharing? That's all they do in heaven. Share. So may we begin to share so that his will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. In these days of ultra-liberal capitalism, big word, ultra-liberal capitalism which has produced so many, so much wealth for some, but unfortunately landed others in degrading poverty. People like Chief Odifi say that it is wrongly managed one. It is not the capitalism that is the cause, right? But that it is wrongly managed. Good. But however, it has not been managed properly because it has produced so many poor people and few rich people. Now, we must learn to share for the goods of the earth are destined for all. So whatever system we are using, I mean, if you have a situation where you have 10 fishermen, and 10 fishermen set out at night to go to fish, and they divide the waters and say, okay, you take that direction, I take this direction, take this direction to fish, and they come back and two of them haul 50 huge fishes in their boats, and eight of them have nothing. But they have all toiled, and they have nothing. Now, what do they say? That God has blessed us because our God is a miracle God. Our mother is a millionaire mother, Mary. So they eat their fish and then they grow fat and then whatever. And then the others, you can go and smoke air. That's your own. Is that what they should do? The fact that they found fish and found 50-50 and the others found nothing, what does it compel them to do? To share. Now, it is a great shame, my dear sisters and brothers. It is a grievous sin, a great shame, a terrible scandal that in a world rich enough for individuals to engage in what is called space tourism, those of you who know what is called space tourism, meaning that some people are spending three, four, five billion dollars to go to the moon for holidays. I know many of you have not heard that before. People are going to the moon on holidays to go and spend two weeks and blow away two, three, four billion dollars in two weeks. In a world rich enough to have that, hundreds of millions of people live below poverty line and go to bed each day hungry. It's a grievous sin, a great shame, a terrible scandal. In a world that is, it is a great shame and a terrible scandal that in a country, Nigeria, like our own, rich enough, endowed enough to have produced many multimillionaires, multimillionaires who spend millions and millions on frivolities. Take Chief Tensi's title and spend 20 million naira. Just blast it overnight. Go and take honorary doctor, honorary causa, and blow 30 million naira and blow it overnight. Celebrate birthday of a child, celebrate marriage of a child, and blow 50 million naira. A world that has a number of people who do that, it is a shame, terrible shame, a great scandal, a grievous sin that in such a country there could exist malnourished children, undernourished children like the one you are seeing in that photograph. In a world, in a country rich enough to have many individuals with private jets, don't we? With private jets. Those other images come from the same country. This is a great shame, grievous sin, terrible scandal. It is a great shame and a terrible scandal that in a country where hundreds of millions of naira could be spent on furnishing apartments for some public officials, that citizens, that any citizen should lack clean, potable water to drink. It is a great shame. A terrible scandal. Somehow we have a way of blocking our minds against those things. 
that thing he called sensitivity our brother called sensitivity there's a way we numb our senses and we are no more sensitive to these things and you know it is not only the multi-millionaire that has this problem many of us have this problem I have an example I was in Lagos for 12 13 years and I have seen people either through my help or through some other person's help or whatever somebody who was in the village teaching in one local secondary school and earning 14,000 naira in the month and then somebody helps the person and he comes to the city and gets a work in a bank or in some corporate organization and the very next month after he was earning 14,000 for, for years in the village the very month, next month she's earning 150,000 naira you know what happens her taste changes immediately what did I say all her salary for the month was what 14,000 naira the very next month she goes to buy a pair of shoes for 25,000 naira and then she needs a suit that costs 40,000 naira 50,000 naira huh? to meet up her class yes yes yes, yes to meet up her class then two, 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 two years down the road I see the same person and I'm talking with the same person and the person is beginning to say you know I'm just married and he's expecting a baby and he say you know father you know me me I know if you deliver my baby in this country I cannot deliver my baby in this country <laughs> not not my baby for for Nigerian nurses to mess around with not my baby and she needs two three million naira to fly her to go and deliver her baby meanwhile the people that she was with any 14,000 naira are still in that mess and she is not helping any you get the point I'm making is this a fairy tale something you are all familiar with we are all familiar I I saw it and every time I saw it I just shook my head when I have the opportunity I call the person to order I call the person to order that the gift you have received the abundance that you have is meant to, for you to help others, not meant for you to eat it all. I tell you, the guy who was earning 14,000 and who is now earning 150, the money is not enough for him in the month. Do you know that? The 150 is no longer enough. The next month, the test changes. Then what happens is that she begins to look for another work immediately. That's why there's so much movement. She begins to look for another work because she hears that her company MTN is paying her 150 she hears that Zenith is paying 300 for her level so she begins to apply again every day she's applying for job again now she gets there and then she's earning 300 then she hears that there's a place where they are earning 450,000 her level LNG and she begins to you are all familiar with that and by the time she's earning it, it is still not enough for her because as she says she climbs to the next level meanwhile it's just about five years her colleagues who are earning 14,000 they have just moved to 17,000 I said that in this country the common denominator in our life is greed G R E E D is the common denominator in our life and that greed blinds people it doesn't help people to see the environment and to be sensitive to what is happening We cannot multiply food as Jesus did. It's not in our power. There are so many hungry people. It's not in our power to multiply food. And we don't need to. I stand here to say we don't need the miracle of the loaves. We don't need to multiply uh, uh, food. If we follow the example of the small boy, all we need to do is to do what? To share. We can't multiply loaves, but we can share we can share from the little that each one of us has and you'll be amazed how it will multiply Jesus continues to ask the question he asked Philip in the gospel where are we going to find food to feed this multitude of people where do we find food <laughs> and many people are doing like Philip <laughs> even 20 million naira will not find food for these people so don't just talk about it just let them go home that's how the world is some have some don't have let them go home fingers are not equal but Andrew said there is a young lad here 
with five loaves. Meaning, there's something that can be done about it. There is something that can be, there is none of the problems that we have that nothing can be done about it. Every one of our problems, something can be done about it. The Lord wants us to make a little effort to try and then he will multiply it for us. Shall we bring out the little we have or do we prefer to hoard and say it is not possible? The issue of world hunger, of hunger in our society, of water problems, of our gifts, our talents, our treasures, our possessions are signs of God's goodness. But they are given to us in trust. To whom much has been given from him, much is expected. You see, I share with people, sometimes I, I, I lament about what I suffer. The Lord has given me quite some gifts. And I enjoy those gifts. I can read a lot. I can write a lot. I can edit books. I can, in a short time, I can produce volumes of work. But I suffer, you know. Because, sir, at this time, as we sit down, do you know the number of manuscripts that people have sent to me to edit? With all the work I have, people are writing doctorate in Manchester and are sending me the dissertation to, edit, to look at and give them suggestions and so on. I end up, I sit down at 2 a.m. and I'm reading and I'm like, hey, who sent Talu Rominshe? Who sent me? And while I'm struggling to refuse this, others are coming. I know in my person what it means that to whom much has been given from him, much is expected. I am reading, Abi Benjamin. I am leading as if I'm doing work every day because of the demand on my time, because of the gifts God has bestowed on me. I may go home now and get a call from Ruben about in the Guardian saying, Father, please write tomorrow's editorial. It is on this. To whom much has been given from him, much is It is exactly the same for each one of us for the gifts that the Lord has given to us. Some have money. Some, some have houses, some have land, some have whatever. All those things are given to us in trust for the benefit of not only ourselves but others. These gifts, sisters and brothers, they come with responsibilities to, to share with our brothers and sisters and to pass them on. Now, does the fact that we have food to eat does it mean that we are special in the sight of God or that we have found favor in his sight? You see, there are many Nigerian Christians who tell themselves that I am comfortable because I am serving God well. Are you familiar with that? The reason why I am comfortable is that I am serving God well. And it is not my lot to be poor because I am serving the good Lord. Don't you hear that? It is not my lot to be poor because I am serving the good Lord well. Now, does the good God feed some of his children with plenty and let others go away hungry? Tell me. Does the good God feed some of his children with plenty and let others go hungry? Now, what does it then mean that when the good God gives you plenty, he gives you the responsibility to help him reach the others? We cannot say... Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with money or with food or with possessions and proceed to live selfish lives or to live lives as if we were the only ones in the world. As Christians, we must work against the excessive inequality that exists in our society today. There is too much inequality. It's excessive. There is no way all of us can be equal. It will never happen. Just as I don't have equal education with many other people, it is not going to happen that we have equal financial resources. But the inequality that exists today, by which, I have said it here before, by which even officially, some people earn 10,000 Naira per month to take care of themselves and their families, and others earn one or two million per month, even officially, that is not acceptable in Christian whatever, it's not. Is that, is that fair? To go to the same market and eat the same paunedia maneba. And I, I have said it here before. Let's not feign helplessness. Let's not say there's nothing we can do about it. There is something we can do about it. And I give you an example. I did something about it when I was Secretary General of the Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria. 
when I was Catholic Secretary, when I was Secretary General of the Catholic Secretary to Nigeria, because we didn't have much money, as Secretary General, I earned 40,000 up to two years ago. I left only two years ago. I earned 40,000. I had staff that were earning much more than that. Some of you know, right? Um, uh, Paul. I had staff that were earning much more than that because I said they have families. I don't have family. So the, the situation is that there is what is called fair wage, living wage. Until today, we are still discussing about increasing minimum wage. That is for those who have work, and there are many others that don't have work. And minimum wage, by the way, the minimum wage as of today is still 7,500 naira for a whole month. Is that fair? My dear sisters and brothers, Generosity should have a central place in the life of every Christian. Many opportunities present themselves every day for us to share our time, our talents and treasures, and also to share our very lives. And the most fitting response that we can give for God's immense love for us is to be generous towards others. When we are so generous, joy becomes the reward of generosity. Can we say those lines? Generous, generous people are hardly ever sad. But miserly people are hardly ever happy. One more time. Generous people are hardly ever sad. And miserly people are hardly ever happy. Yes, I have this poem to share with you. This poem was written by a Korean poet called Kim Chi Ha. Food is to be shared. Can you say the second line when I read the first line? As you cannot go to heaven alone, food is to be shared. For food is heaven. As you share the sight of the heavenly stars, so food is something which must be shared. For food is heaven. When food passes your truth, you accent heaven in your body. For food is heaven. And together we read the last line. Ah, food is something that must be shared. Finally, our catechism teaches us the corporal works of mercy. And among the corporal works of mercy, the, the number one is what? To feed the hungry. To feed the hungry is a corporal works of mercy. It ends us heaven. And the others are to give drink to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to visit the imprisoned, to shelter the homeless, to visit the sick, and to bury the dead. Good. Scripture passages. Jesus Christ had said, unless you become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. We see that example in today's little child. Matthew 18, 1 to 4. Then the story of the widow's might. Mark 12, 41 to 44. Then how can I repay the Lord for his generosity to me? Psalm 116, verse 12. Be compassionate as your heavenly father is compassionate. Give and there will be gifts for you. A full measure shaken together, pressed over, will be your Lord. For the measure you give out is the measure you receive. Then the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Then as you did it for the least of my brethren, you do it to me. And finally, on the blessings that come with titan. With titan. I thought I should mention it today because I don't like preaching about tight. I don't like preaching about money. But I have seen read too many testimonies about people who give tithe and what blessings the Lord has uh, bestowed them with and in today's context of generosity I thought I should mention it and encourage those who want to give tithe to go ahead Heavenly Father we thank you and praise you we glorify your holy name we thank you for your many blessings we thank you for your love and your goodness we thank you for your generosity by which you sent your son to die on the cross for us we are all beneficiaries of your generosity of your lavish love your astonishing kindness and compassion lord since we are made in your own image heal us of the blinders greed and avarice that blinds us and does not allow us to be generous help us to have the grace of that small boy in today's gospel to be willing to bring our five loaves and two fish knowing beforehand that you are there to multiply them Heavenly Father, bless all those who strive, who make a little effort to be generous. Bless them with your own abundance. 
help us all of us to see that as we reach out to touch others that you enrich us in return help us to see that all of us whom you have given enormous gifts that you want us to share it with others help us to do this so that your kingdom may truly come among us through christ our lord amen